All right. Uh, I am Corey. Welcome back to the pod, Pursuit Pod 6.4. Uh, today we've got a wonderful guest. We've got Danny. Danny, how you doing? What's the vibes? What's the vibes? What's going on, Corey? <laughs> Not much. What's going on with you? Just quarantining quarantining and uh trying to be as productive as possible well i'm not trying i'm being as productive as possible what's what's your what's your day-to-day look like oh <sighs> so my day-to-day is um i work out probably not every day but like every other day just push-ups i'm, I'm heavy with the push-ups just push-ups well i do other stuff but like i definitely do push-ups every day but like every other day is when i incorporate like squats which is been killing me and like i have like this whole guide thing that i do so that body weight squats or you have weights or what's going on i'll just regular body weight squats exactly okay so so yeah i don't have i don't have any uh, well i have the pull-up i have the pull-up bar so i use that interchangeably to do pull-ups and then i do push-ups with it as well how many pull-ups do you do uh i do like three sets of 10. nice yeah three sets of 10 and um i'm trying to get better but like i'm like yeah so like even like with my push-ups i do like 40 straight but like in a day i could do like 200. whoa okay but it's like spread out through the day for sure what's your absolute max um i think right now i'm at like 200. I'm at like 200. No, and one, like, and one oh, shot. One, oh, I max out at like 40. 40, yeah, like 40. 40, you're maxing out? So I'm maxing out at 40. But I'm up That's from like, though. yeah, I'm up from like 30 though. I'm up from like 30. When was when were you at 30? Probably like a month ago. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty good. Probably a month ago. So I'm, I'm up to 40 now. So. so this quarantine's been just phenomenal for your physique. <sighs> I guess. Uh, this is I, nothing better to do. Just um, push us. Yeah, I, it's just I. It's like it's just once you start, you just can't stop. You just go for it. And then I've been trying to get into like meditating a lot more. Okay. So um, I don't meditate as much as I should, but I've probably been meditating maybe two times a week. Like, How, the- what's that look like? So I have this app. It's called um, I forgot the name of the app, but it's like guided meditation. So. They play like this, um, this like the fire, the wood fire burning sound, and like they guide you through the meditation. I, I'm doing like mindful, um, mindfulness meditation or something like that. So I do like 20 minutes or 25 minutes of that. Pretty nice. Somebody's talking to you throughout it, or you're just listening to the fire. So it's like they're talking to you, but they're not talking for the whole entire time. So like. They like when you first start off, they tell you to like relax, release all the tension from your shoulders and your neck. And they start off like that. Then you go through like a deep breathing aspect of it. And then like when you really get into it, they're like, okay, breathe regularly and just go through it that way. And then like they give you reminders, like if your mind is like wandering, because you're supposed to be focusing on your um, your breath. Right. How like, you know, like the air comes out through or through your nose and out your mouth and just or focusing on like your stomach or something like that so if you a lot of times for me I just wander off and start thinking about like anything so they have like a a bell that like rings every whatever amount of time like two three minutes or something like that that lets you know to get back on track and focus on your breathing and the bell doesn't annoy you it does because it kind of scares me but because usually I kind of like fall asleep like, oh yeah, you fall asleep. Yeah, I definitely like start to doze off, and um, when that bell kind of rings, it wakes me up, and it's like a shock, and it's like, oh shoot, let me get back to like focusing on my breathing. But um, it helps though. I do feel better after. I don't know if it's because I slightly take a nap, or the actual just meditation actually just works. But I always feel better after. Always. Like, what kind of better? You feel happier or calmer, or what? What are you feeling? So, I feel more relaxed. I feel like, I think it's more of like a relaxed feeling, like just extremely relaxed, like extremely relaxed, extremely like just calm. Like that's the only way I could really describe it. But if if you haven't, you should try it. 
I've, I mean, I've definitely tried meditation before and it was, a, it was an absolute mess for me. I couldn't stop thinking or I'll just fall asleep. It's like kind of a one or the other. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I have some friends that are super into it. One of them goes to these 10-day meditative retreats where they don't talk for 10 days and they just sit and meditate. Is that something that interests you? Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm down for stuff like that because, you know, I do believe in like, the like you know the benefits that you get from meditating because i do feel the immediate like feeling of calm but like what i've uh, well, like what i understand about meditation is like it's all practice so you have to like do it and and get better at it and you know it'll work out yeah you think so yeah i think i think it's a good thing for like people to do especially so you- if you have anxiety and stuff like that yeah do you have a lot of anxiety no, well, not no, not well, kind of sometimes. You I have guess no idea. <laughs> well, not really. I think I guess it's like a normal amount of anxiety that most people have. I don't think I would classify myself as a person like with just a lot of anxiety. Yeah. But um I I you know, I have a little anxiety. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I don't how know. How long have you been meditating for? Um so I have, so I've been into like meditation, like on and off for maybe about like five years. Whoa. Yeah. But I don't do it like consistently. There's never been a time where I've like meditated every day for a month straight or something like that. But like, I've always been like, it's kind of like when I feel like I need it, I do it. So like, even when like I first started Pursuit, I used to like sit in my car and just meditate for 15 minutes before I even walked in class and i found that that kind of helped me yeah that's pretty cool and yeah. so how, how old are you right now 30 30 30 so how did you get into meditation at 25 um so i started honestly i started meditating after like a breakup i knew i knew i was gonna say it has something to do with the relationship i knew it either they yeah, got it was- you into it or you got it after it. i got into it after the breakup because I don't know. I think I forgot. I it was it was definitely because of the breakup, and then like I think I kept on thinking about like the whole thing. Like I was just like, whoa! I can't believe like we're not together. This is kind of crazy. How long have you guys been together? So we were together for like six years. That's like that was like my like or yeah yeah. Whoa. Yeah, we were together for like seven years or something like that. We were together forever. Were they into meditation? No, definitely not. Definitely not. It was something that I picked up after the fact because like of like the breakup. Like it was like, man, I'm hurt. I'm hurting. Wow. Yeah, the pain. So you were with them from high school until then. Yeah. So, well, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, basically. Because we were kind of like on and off from high school. But um, like the longest amount of time that we were actually together together was like six, seven years. So. Whoa. Yeah. So, How did you guys meet in high school? Um. So she was she was my friend's girlfriend's best friend. Okay. So, so we so I saw her. I thought she was pretty. I thought she was fire. Actually, she was she was fire. But oh I thought she, she's not watching this. <laughs> well, you know, just in case she might. Yeah. Think. Right. I don't know that like, she was fire back then, but um. And then I just asked about her. I asked about her and then like we kind of set it up. And then like every day, like after school, we would meet up and like go eat like Chinese food or something or maybe go to the movies. And um, yeah, I said like just we were dating and it was cool. It was cool. That was my that was my boogle. Oh, my God. So why why did you guys break up? Um, well, so. Well, what happened was she got a special friend. At she had a work boyfriend, so oh, so she was. Knows, anybody knows about the work boyfriend? It's that guy that's there that's gonna tell her that she's pretty when you didn't tell her that she was pretty today, and it's the guy that's just sitting around waiting oh. for you to mess up. Yeah. Where was she working? Uh, at the post office. So she was working at like she, the date, post she dated some post another postal worker. <sighs> She was, yeah, she was bugging. She was tripping. Yeah. So you ended it. Well, yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, I had to. I could, yeah. Yeah. 
I found I found out and then it was just like, all right, I'm not going to, you know, I got to go. I, and I'm good for like, I'm good for disappearing. So I just pulled the disappearing move. I ghosted her. Seriously? After six years? I'm, what was I supposed to do? I made up. Yeah. I made up my mind. It was like, all right, this you is. You not- told her why? Like, how did you find out? How did I find out? Well, yeah. it was it was so many different things, but I found out because like, um, so I knew somebody. My friend worked at the same post office. Wait, is this the friend who's it was their girlfriend's best friend, it's or this different? Entire, this is a whole entire different person. You have a lot of friends. So when so when he started working at the post office. And I found out that they worked at the same post office. I'm like, wow, my, my girl works there. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's her name. He's like, oh, I, don't, I don't recognize the name. Then I showed him a picture. He's like, whoa, her? Are you sure? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I think she, she got a boyfriend that works there too. I'm like, you sure? And then everything just started unraveling. Yeah. And did awesome. you ever confront, like, confront her though? Or? Yeah, so I did. And you know, apparently that shit that was just like her friend at the time. But like, whatever, whatever the nature of the relationship was, it's definitely something that if we're together, like it wouldn't be like appropriate. So it was just like, all right. And uh, you know, I didn't need to do too much digging. It was just like, okay, this is what's going on. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. This, this is not right. Are you so, still friends with that messenger guy? You know. Um, I saw, I'm, well, I saw him like maybe last year. Um, and, um, yeah, we're, we're cool, but we don't, we don't speak, we don't speak often. Like he's not like a person that I could speak to that I speak to every day, but I could definitely call him right now and it'd be like picking up where we left off. He, sure. You know, Do you have a lot of people that you speak to every day? Um, not really. I'm not, yeah, not really, not really. I'm not, yeah. I, I'm not really, yeah, not really. Because, <laughs> right. you know, I, just, I had to think about it, but nah, not really. Not really, no. I'm not texting everybody all day like that. Are you close with your family? Uh, Yeah, well, kind of. So I'm, I'm closest with, like, my brother. So me and him are, like, that's, I would say that's, like, my best friend. My oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, my older brother. So me and him are close, but like the rest of my family, we you know, family is just family sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Family is family, yeah. Yeah, but what I mean like it's just family. Okay, that's my cousin. We'll see each other on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Um, never again kind of a thing. How many siblings do you have? So I have five siblings. So I have four right. siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's a whole situation. So I have four sisters that are from my father's side, and I have just one brother from my mother's side. Okay, so your father really makes a lot yeah. of sense. So he so he's crazy. So basically, I've always known about like my two older sisters, but apparently he he had like two other like children that no one knew about and i i think i found out about them maybe like three four years ago yeah what? How did they, you? They How? Were, so my grandmother his mother died and on like the obituary like there was these, these two random names that no one knew what it was about and then you know the family started you know it's like the whole family knew like his sisters my cousins they knew but they they no one told like me and my my sisters the other oh, I see. Sisters. yeah who wrote the obituary i don't know whoever oh okay but um yeah they were there and then like one day there was like a family barbecue and then he was like listen i got two other kids here they are. These are your sisters. These are your younger sisters. This is what it is. And we're like, okay, cool, whatever. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. That's and pretty one interesting. Of them just turned, I think she just turned 17, like, on the 4th. Oh, she's like an adult. 
Almost. Yeah, she was. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. He was. He was living a double life. Well, Have you done the twenty three and Me tests or Ancestry or anything? So no, I haven't done that. But I did like um, the gradient thing. I don't know if you know about gradient. I don't know about gradient. What's okay. that? It's it's kind of crazy. But like you like take like you like take a picture of yourself or you like you upload a picture of yourself and like they analyze like your face. And like, I guess your features or something, and then they just spit out like your ancestry. So I previously I said twenty percent Jewish, but it was two percent. That's what it was. So oh, so what, they did that based off of your facial structure, though. My face. Well, because you got like a beard. <laughs> I I don't know. I I do not know. Apparently, they're saying I'm like Brazilian. I'm two percent. Jewish and I, that was kind of weird because I'm like what do you mean by that but I guess it's just like I don't know I guess my I don't know I just look like original I don't know I, just, I, just, I don't know Are, do you have Ethiopian in your family no no oh, okay. no Cause there's, so, there's quite a few Ethiopian Jews yeah my my ex-girlfriend was well not that one that I was speaking about but like my most recent ex-girlfriend she was Ethiopian so oh yeah. uh, was she Jewish no uh, like she like her fan she has like friends and stuff that are actually like jewish and things like that so interesting so gradient does it all from a picture a picture what's their accuracy i don't know i don't know i just did it because i thought it was cool and it was just crazy to kind of see what they said that i was so it was just like okay that is cool it was like they were really saying like it, I, so i think it was like 40 something or like 50 percent like african then it was like 30 something percent like um brazilian then it was like like spain like spanish from spain then it had like portuguese and then it was like the the two percent do you know if any of that's right i'm i i do i'm haitian so i don't know like i you're I, haitian I assume that yeah, yeah. So I assume that my ancestry is starts from there, and then wherever else it goes, like to Africa, I guess, or wherever else it goes, I don't know. But I don't think I don't think I'm Jewish. <laughs> you should do the you should do the twenty three and Me because you might also find that you have a lot more siblings or something. Really? Well, because it it finds relatives that you have, so. Sheesh. If you're finding siblings without it, you might find even more with it. Who knows? I don't I don't need any more siblings. I, <laughs> I my father, my father, I don't know what that man is doing out here in these streets. Well, I have an idea what he's doing. Obviously, because he cannot <laughs> stop. Like I he probably has more that we don't even know about, and he's just so good at keeping secrets that it's just like we will never know. He's gonna take it to the grave with him. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You want kids? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely want kids. Uh, I want to be, uh, but I, I don't want any boys. I want girls. How are you going to control that? Are you going to adopt? Um, I've, I don't know, but my father, he has four girls, one boy. So I'm assuming that he might have passed that down to his one boy. So my likelihood of making boys might not be high. So how come you want only girls and not boys? so one like i don't know i think i think baby girls is just so precious like you know they love you so much and it's just i don't know i just boys it's like it's a little bit different and then they're like boys are usually like mama's boys and what? like yeah I've, I've noticed that like they're really like attached to their mother and they just don't give like they don't care about their father well, it's just until like, puberty, maybe. Maybe later on when they actually need you and stuff. But like at their young age, they don't even care. Like my friend, he has a boy and a girl. And he's like, there's just like a big difference between like the relationship with his daughter versus the relationship with his son. And, you know. He likes the daughter more? It's It's not even like he likes the daughter more. It's like the daughter likes him more. It's like the son does not like, even care it's just like mommy 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 and like his daughter like defends him 
She's like, don't talk to my dad like that. Like, she's just like, she just loves her dad. So I, I think I need that in my life. <laughs> That's nice. That's just going to love me and be obsessed with me. I don't know. Are you dating anybody now? No, I am single. I am single. Yeah, single, single. Okay. Yeah. Rough out here in these streets, Corey. <laughs> Where do you live? Queens. Oh, um, okay. Close to Pursuit? Uh, it's probably 30 minutes. Out. I'm closer to, I live in Jamaica, so I'm closer to the airport. Oh, okay. You drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a pretty decent drive. I, I, I miss those drives, actually, like the Sunday morning drives to Pursuit. Those are like the best like morning drives, like when the sun is out, you know. What do you just, listen to while you're driving? Um, It depends. But like on Sundays, I usually play like Sade. Sade. Okay. Essential. She's... She got some. She got some good music. I've heard of the Shah. The, the Shah? Who's the Shah? Who the are you Shah calling? Day. I call it the Shah. No, don't do that. Don't do her that. Her and I, you know, we're like, we're yeah. like this. Yeah. Don't put this. Her name is Shah Day. You got to put some respect on her name. All right. Miss Shah Day. She's I've the, heard of the Shah Day. Yeah, she's. You don't like listen to her music at all, like. I think it was. It's really slow, right? If I'm not mistaken. It's like jazzy. I think I listened to it once. Honestly, I don't think I was that into it when I heard it. Maybe I'll give it another shot. I think you should. I think, and you're into music, so. Well, as much as anybody. Well, aren't you a musician? Yeah, yeah, but I. But that doesn't mean like. That I listen to everything and stuff. Really? Yeah, I'm more of someone who finds an artist that I like, and then I listen to everything buy them and I listen to things over and over again me too I literally do that all the time I can but I can list I will listen to one song on repeat for like every day out the week until like I get tired of it same what are you listening to lately so currently I'm making a playlist so I'm I'm giving you guys an exclusive I'm giving you guys an exclusive so um, I'm making a playlist and it's going to be for my 30 days of code playlist. So essentially I'm making a playlist that, you know, the coders can code to, and I'm just putting a whole bunch of different like songs together. And um, awesome. Dancing Monkey is going to be there. That's the name of Dancing Monkey? Dance Monkey. Yeah. Monkey. It's, it's, it's on there. That's a good song. It's a great song. It's a no, great have song. you heard Deathbed? I've been listening to that a lot lately. Who is Deathbed? What is Deathbed? Uh, Deathbed. Let me see. I think it's by like Pogs or something. Let me. Death. Very dark. Pal Fu. It's by Pal Fu. Yeah, it's kind of a sad song, but it's super catchy. Really? Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's a sad song, but it's catchy. It's got like this. It's got this girl singing this hook. That's a really catchy hook. That sounds a little bit altered, kind of like an Alvin and the Chipmunky feel. <laughs> but it, but it's not like it's not like that. It just has. I, I'm just, I feel like it's been sped up just a touch. Um, um, and then it's got a guy who raps over it. That's pretty good. It's a sad song, but that hook is super catchy. I don't like sad songs. I need songs that make me happy. Well, yeah, then stick with Dance Monkey. Yeah, that, that song makes me happy. That song. Yeah, that song makes me happy. And like, yeah, it remind, it makes me, it gives me like um, the, you know, uh, Hathaway, I believe that's his name. And you know his song, the What, of, what is Love? Oh yeah, that song. Night of the Roxburgh. Yeah, yes. it gives me that kind of feeling. It just makes me happy. I don't know why. It just makes oh, me that's happy. a good song too. Yeah, it's is that going to be on the playlist? I don't know if it's going to make it because the play the vibe has to be like right. Like you can't just add anything to a playlist. But um, I'm I'm trying to put together like a nice nice playlist. Any sure. classical music going to get on that playlist? No, probably not. Oh, okay. I probably would have to dedicate a playlist to kind of go with that vibe. Like, because it's, it's, so making a playlist is, it's like a science to it. Like, you can't just put anything on the playlist. It has to transition well. Like, it, you know, it has to, and I have experience with like kind of making like a playlist because of like my audio engineering experience. So putting That's together a project, you want to be able to like have the songs transition 
extremely well. So you don't put things like in certain places. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Are you still doing audio engineering? Uh, not as much, not as much. Um, I just finished a project, um, maybe like a month and a half ago. And, um, yeah, so I, I've honestly been only working with this one artist and I just find like, I don't have enough time to like code and do the audio stuff because it requires literally the same amount of energy and it's, it's just, it's just a lot. And both are in front of the computer, right? Right in front of the computer. So that makes it tough as well. Yeah. And then it's like, so like what I realized is that you have to have like your energy has to be right when you go into coding or when you go into like the audio stuff. So it's like, if I'm like in a coding vibe, it's hard for me to kind of get into the audio vibe. So it's just, I'm at the point where I rather just enjoy music. Yeah. I have that's to work fair. All the time. Cause it just, it just gets, it gets crazy. It gets crazy. That's fair. Do you have a dream job? Um, so I don't have a dream job because so so basically long story short this me being at pursuit was a part of my master plan so i've planned out everything in my life you know for for as long as i can remember i've always had like a plan even though my plan might change but i've always had a plan i've always like executed my plan so like with pursuit i heard about pursuit like probably from the first like from the first year that pursuit yeah so i saw juk i saw so i saw juk on new york one and he was speaking about pursuit and everything and i'm like whoa this sounds like exactly what i want to do and um and at the time i think you didn't even have to pay back the 12 percent or something like that i felt like it was like super free but maybe i'm wrong about that but if it was the, the first year i think you're right yeah and then like but the reason why i got into wanting to code is because me and my brother, which is like my partner, like my business partner, everything, we came up with like a dope like idea, like an app idea. And like me, which is the same exact thing I did with music, it's like when you kind of want to do something, it's hard to kind of go look for someone to do it for you versus just learning how to do it yourself. And I've never been afraid to just roll up my sleeves and learn how to do whatever I need to do. So um, what made me really want to do it was because I met this guy at, a, at the barbershop and he was like a coder or whatever. And he was telling me how, I, the first question I asked him is how much would you charge me? Cause I have a crazy app idea. How much would you charge me? He looked at me and laughed. I'm like, what's so funny? And he's just like, listen, like people always ask that question. He's like, you have to understand, like if I write some type of code for you like for me to give you my code or sell you my code, you have to pay me a lot of money for that. But if you just want me to write some code for you and you know, I still own the code, but you can use your code for your app and I'll do everything for you. It'll probably be like 350,000 or something like that. I'm like 350,000. I don't even like technically own the code. He was like, yeah. So technically I could take that same code and sell it to your competitor and and go through that process i'm like so how much would you really charge me and he was like oh, i don't know it has to be up there it has to be up there so in my mind i'm like all right i'd rather just write my own code and just do it that way and that, kind of, that one guy's quote yeah <laughs> happy i'm happy about it you gotta look at the market though i'm sure there's somebody else who might be happy to do a lower bid this was so this was so pursuit was we're in like 6.0 so pursuit was like six years ago so that was maybe three years before that okay so i guess maybe back then things were really expensive compared to now um probably not as available i don't know but uh -huh. the he scared me into like saying okay i'm just gonna do this by myself i i'm not paying that kind of money that's cool it's not gonna happen and um then I found out about Pursuit and I told myself that I was going to give myself like five years to kind of still be into like the music thing and still kind of chase that. And then because music, when I got into like engineering, it was kind of like as the, my, my job as an engineer was kind of like dying because of the fact that 
the same thing that made me like kind of empowered me to be an engineer, which is having a laptop, having a small interface and just being able to work from home is the same thing that empowers artists to be able to do the same exact thing in their house and just right. not need you. So I always knew that. And um, so I gave myself five years. I traveled. I had a great time. I went to festivals like it was it was fun but um cool got into the coding now i'm here so this was this was the plan this was the plan so you're you're doing this to build an app that you for you and your brother yeah yeah i have a few different like but like at this point like i have like a few different like ideas and they're like great 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 ideas and they still haven't like no one still haven't like hasn't done it yet so cool it's a good sign. So I, I assume you're going to keep those to yourself. Yes. Right now. Good yeah. Idea. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy about the experience cause I feel like I'm meeting like a lot of people that, you know, that I'm going to be able to possibly call on to be able to work and contribute to, to, to the idea. And we all could get rich. That's awesome. Yeah. Like billion dollar ideas, Corey. I think, uh, Love it. We're, yeah. We're, the, money, the money's waiting for us. So your dream job is on entrepreneurship. 1,000%. 1,000%. Very cool. Yeah. What are, is your brother learning to, learning to code or is he just counting on you to do it? Um, so he's the money man. He's the money man. So uh, my brother's in real estate. So he, he yeah, he gets, he, he makes a lot of money from real estate. And um, so he's, he's the money man. He's the guy that's going to be investing into whatever we need to do and however way we need to build a company, whatever we need. He's the guy that's going to go get the money for us. So, Very cool. Yeah, Very cool. The, the technical guy, I guess. Well, I'm excited to see what you end up building and see what happens. It's, it's going to be beautiful, Corey, and I would love to have you on the team. I would love to definitely have you on the team. All right, yeah. Well, I'm I'm into it. Yeah. I know I know you're expensive, so we're we're gonna have the budget for you. I know I know you're worth uh oh, I know you're worth, and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sell you short. Thanks, Danny. That's very nice of you. Uh, but yeah, thanks thanks so much for coming out today. Thank uh, you. Really? Anything else you wanted to pitch or say? Shout out to six point four. Shout out to you guys. Without you guys, this would not be possible. I enjoy the class. I enjoy everything about it. I'm happy that, you know, we could have and uh, share this experience together. So I just appreciate being here. I'm happy to be here. I'm lucky to be here, right? 8%? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, awesome. Well, thank you. Out to the team. Thanks so much, Danny. Uh, have a good night. You too.